Hey crafty people, I'm Sarah, also known as Craft Nerd because I'm a nerd who loves to craft. Over the years I've dabbled in most types of crafting, although for the past decade or so I've been doing primarily card making and mixed media art. I've recently embarked on a junk journaling journey that I hope you'll join me on. So for our second card of Christmas, I'm going to show you how to create a ribbon accent piece that's a great way to use up your ribbon scraps if you've got them. Let's get crafting! So the idea for this card is one I've used many times before, and it's a great way if you have some scrap ribbon to use your scrap ribbon. Um, I don't currently have too much in the way of scrap Christmas ribbon, so I'll just be using some ribbon from my stash. Now if you don't have ribbon, you can use scrap pieces of paper to do basically the same thing. And what we're going to do is take a piece of scrap cardstock, and this is four and a quarter by one and three quarters wide. And we're going to create a ribbon covered band to go on our card. And so what I'm going to do is I've got some of my Christmas ribbons from my stash. And I'm gonna pick a ribbon to start with. Um, let's use this guy. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna attach some ribbon to the corner and go on a diagonal. And I'm just gonna use Fabri-Tac because that's great for sticking down ribbon. You can also use um, double-sided adhesive, that would work great as well. I'm just gonna make sure I've got my corner covered and oop, I'm sticking up above my piece of paper a little bit because it's going to be easier to trim off um, after it's glued down than to line it up perfectly. I am, however, gonna trim this off so that we don't have this big piece of ribbon hanging over here. And so I'm just gonna pick ribbons that I've got in my stash of ribbon and kind of alternate colors and widths and just apply them on a diagonal. And so I figured instead of leaving you with silence while I do the repetitive process of attaching ribbons, we could talk about Christmassy things. And if you don't want to talk about all things Christmassy, feel free to hit the mute button because I'll never know. Do you hand make Christmas cards? Actually, I guess the first question is, do you send out Christmas cards at all? And if you do, do you hand make your cards, buy store-bought cards, send out those photo cards? It seems most of the cards I receive each year are photo cards sent to me by family and friends. In fact, I'll, several of my friends have commented that they have a complex about getting me cards because of the handmade cards I make. Um, and this question was prompted by a question I received on the first card of Christmas about whether I make several different kinds of cards each year or whether I do one design. And I um, generally make individual cards for each person I send a Christmas card to. Um, so in years past, I've made between 50 and 60 different Christmas cards. Now, you just want to make sure... As you saw, when I placed this ribbon down, it wasn't all the way to the edge. So I just adjusted it because you don't want to have to try and fill in um, pieces. So you just need to make sure each ribbon goes completely from one end to the other when you are adding your diagonal stripes. And please excuse my now red fingers. I've been filming the same weekend. I filmed a bunch of uh, videos that I was dyeing papers. So I have had 
brown fingers and green fingers and now red fingers because I've been dyeing all sorts of paper and well I don't wear gloves when I do this so my hands end up being a bit of a mess Now when you get to the bottom corner, you just need to make sure whatever ribbon you put there is wide enough to cover all of your corner piece. And this one will work, so we're going to go with that. And then once you've got all your pieces glued down, what you can do is trim off any excess. Yeah, I might need a little bit more glue. I'm gonna add a little bit more glue. So just double check to make sure everything's glued down well. And if you need to add extra glue in spots that are coming up. And so there's what that looks like. So if you take a card base, and this is um, a five and a half by four and a quarter card base. It can go like this on your card, and then you can put a focal image going this way. And I think there's a few spots over here that just need trimming up to get our line straight. So it'll go on like that. And then you can have your focal image going this way. And we are going to finish assembling this card. I'm going to put it together completely. You could also do a longer piece and thinner piece going this way. Um, so this is something you can adjust to whatever size card you're doing, whatever size piece you want to have. Um, and it's, it's a fairly... easy way to create an interesting accent and use up the ribbon you've been hoarding. So, right, um, so as I said, you can also do it uh, long and maybe a skinnier version. So this one's actually, I cut a piece of scrap paper to one and a half by five and a half. So this would go long ways on a card and pulled out some more ribbon and we're going to go with blues this time. We're just basically going to repeat the same process. Add glue, attach the ribbon, and just make sure for our first piece it's lined up all the way to cover the corner. And that each piece goes from one end to the other fully across to completely cover the piece. Uh, returning to our earlier topic of how many different types of Christmas cards you make each year. Um, as I said, I usually make mostly one of the kind, one of a kind cards. I might do something like I'm doing in this video where it's a couple variations on the same theme. But for the most part, my Christmas cards are uh, original one of a kind designs. Now my life would be a lot easier come holiday season if I could just do one design or maybe pick two or three designs and just mass make those. 
but I have too many Christmas card ideas in my brain usually to just settle on one um, card. Uh, plus, I was watching, I think it was the one of the Tim Holtz lives and he commented on the, well, people aren't comparing their cards with each other. In my world, they were <laughs> because most of the cards I gave out at Christmas went to coworkers, and so they would literally compare their cards with each other. Granted, most of the time, the recipient liked their card best <laughs> when doing the comparison, but it did happen. Uh, and this year, it'll be a little bit easier because uh, at the beginning of the year, I changed jobs, so I no longer work in an office full time. I am fully remote. About half of the cards I did in years past went to coworkers, so my card giving should be greatly decreased this year. And for my nearest and dearest, I usually design the card specifically for them that incorporates whatever theme goes with their interests, hobbies, whatever. I have a friend with a cookie making business, so she usually gets a card with some kind of baking theme on it. And so again, we're gonna trim off any excess and make sure everything is glued down well. As I was saying, you know, friends who like dogs get dog themed cards. And I have a couple I'm friends with where one of the partners is a scuba instructor and they like cats. So I've made cards over the years that combine cats and undersea Christmas scenes, which I can do thanks to the help of some really cute stamp sets by Lawn Fawn that are undersea Christmas themed. Yes, I know it's an odd combination. So now we have a tall skinny one that would go on a card like so. Um, and as I was putting this one together, I realized you could adjust the size of these and turn them into pockets for a junk journal as well. So this is a great way to use up a variety of different pieces of ribbon. Um, and we are going to assemble at least one card. And I'm going to go get the bits and pieces for that and be right back. Now to create a quick background to go with our blue piece. I've just pulled out, this is a Lawn Fawn stencil and it's snowflakes and we're just going to kind of go tone on tone for this. And so we're going to stick this guy down and it is a uh, two part snowflake or two part stencil. So there's a second piece. So we're just going to grab some tumbled glass so I just want to create a little subtle interest in the background. I'm gonna grab a blending brush. I also tend to make a lot of very dimensional uh, interactive type cards because the vast majority of the Christmas cards I give out are hand delivered, which means I don't have to worry about them going through the US mail. So we've got those snowflakes and then this one will sit between to fill in the rest of the area. It just gives a subtle snowflake effect since I used, you know, the tumble glass, which is a fairly light blue on the light blue black background, just to give a little bit of interest to that part and then that'll go there and we just need a focal image to go here and I'm gonna have a bit of a think about that and be right back. Right, so I went ahead and stamped two images for doing our two cards um, and these are both um, from a stamp set by Inka Dinka Do that I have had for years and I haven't used these guys in a while so I figured uh, so as part of my quest to try and use the things I have, I'm trying to use on these some of these cards for the 12 cards of Christmas, stamp sets that have been neglected, supplies like these ribbons that I haven't been using, and try and use some of the stuff in my stash. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and color these guys in. I'm going to start with this owl and I'm going to use 
E70 to start with. This is a quick word about mailing your Christmas cards. If it's got a little bit of bulk, you might want to put a piece of firmer cardstock in front of the bulky part in the envelope to help it go through the machines that sort mail. My dad uh, worked for the US Post Office when I was growing up, fixing the machines that sort the mail. So I was trained from an early age not to mail bulky things. So when I'm coloring with Copics, I like to start with my lightest color, then go to what I'm using for my darkest color, which is E74, and add in my dark spots. Yeah, so as a kid, I would get a lecture from my dad if I tried to mail anything he considered too bulky to go through the sorting machines. Um, your best bet on a bulky card is to use a bubble mailer. Then take my mid color, which for this one's E71. And use that to blend the two together. So that's my little public service announcement on mailing cards. So generally when I'm making my Christmas cards, I break down my list of recipients into those who I am mailing a card to and those I will be hand delivering the card to. So I can make sure that the cards I make for those I am mailing cards to are not bulky. And if they are going to be bulky, I put them in a bubble mailer. I want to come in and go a little darker in a few spots so I'm gonna grab E79 and I'm gonna be very judicious in adding this because I don't want to add too much dark so leave me a comment and let me know if you hand make your Christmas cards and if you do whether you create one design for that you use for all your cards or if you do a variety of designs or if you're insane like me and make individualized cards for everybody um, uh, also, let me know, do you hand deliver most of your cards? Are you mailing most of your cards? Do you give out just a couple cards each year? Or do you have hundreds of cards you're sending out? And are you one of those people who are smart and get an early start on your Christmas cards? Or are you like me and are rushing around last minute? For his hat, I have grabbed B21, 24, and 28. I have a former coworker who could tell you that he would set his watch by when I would come into his office in November and lament the fact that I had not started my Christmas card sooner. And then uh, when I would come into his office in January and insist that this year would be different, I would start earlier. So yeah, everyone who knows me can tell you I am always behind in my holiday cards. In fact, my sister would point out that on many occasions, I was finishing up her and my parents' Christmas cards on Christmas Day because I was so behind on my Christmas cards, and I don't think this year's going to be any different, but maybe next year. Maybe next year. For the band on his hat, I've grabbed YG01, 03, and 06. Uh, I'm actually thinking of starting a series for next year of the 12 Cards of Christmas where I do a card each month and do a YouTube video on it. Uh, let me know what you think about that and if you're interested in seeing that. But I think for the stripes, I'm gonna come in with B28 and just make them dark blue. For the holly leaf, I'm gonna grab YG17, YG9, and G7. And my darkest for this is the G7. gonna do his skates B99. Uh, my go-to beat color is Y38. Do his beak and while I have it out I'll do this guy's beak. 
so I'm gonna do, I think both presents are gonna get B0, B02, and B05. And let me know what you think about me adding the chatty voiceover when I have sections of the video I've sped up. Um, I've been wondering what to do about the fact that I leave chunks of my video silent. Um, but quite frankly, I'm not going to add music to my videos because I just don't want to have to worry about copyright issues and having my video not post because of that. Um, this one's gonna get a YG6 bow. So let me know if you like the chatty bit or if you prefer me leaving it silent. Um, that would definitely be less work for me. <laughs> and this one's going to get B24. For the scarf, I'm gonna grab B21. B02 and then B00 and then I'm going to do B5 for the polka dots on the scarf. And then one last thing for the eyes, I am going to grab Y0000, so the very lightest yellow, and just do that. Moving on to this fellow. All right, I'm gonna do my little Barbie in red and I'm gonna go with R11. R27. R22 I'm also going to use the same for the bow on the birdhouse. For the scarf, I'm going to go with YG17, YG9, and G7. I'm also going to use it for the darker stripes on his hat. And for the lighter stripe, I'm going to use YG01, 03, and 06.
for the birdhouse, I'm going to use E30, 33, and 35. Okay, uh, grabbing G7. For the wreath. And I think we're just gonna use that for the roof. And the trim. Um, and I did go back in and use C7 to color on the inside of the birdhouse. All right, so our birds that we're going to use as our focal images are colored. And what I want to do is cut these out. And I'm going to use my paper trimmer has a decal edge blade that goes to it. So I'm going to use that to trim these out. Unfortunately, um, Fiskar does not make this model of paper trimmer anymore and does not sell the different blades for this type of paper trimmer anymore. So I'm going to be very sad when my um, deckle edged blade no longer wants to cut. <laughs> so we're just going to trim a little bit below uh, the image. And I'm going to trim off the edge over here and then we're going to trim a little bit off on this side and then take the top off so it's deckled all around. Do the same on this one. And then I grabbed some scrap paper out of my scrap bin and I am going to just trim out a mat for this and just going to kind of this is about two and a quarter inches by a little over two inches. This strip is two and a quarter ish. So let's do I'm going to cut it down to two and a half by two and a quarter. So he'll go on there. And this guy's not quite two and a half by about two and a quarter. So I grabbed some thread to go underneath him. So we'll cut that down to two and three quarters, about two and a half. So the deckle edge will stand out nicely now. And actually I think it goes like that. 
And I went ahead and I pulled out, this is an old Sizzix embossing folder and it says Merry Christmas. And so I just embossed a piece of craft cardstock that we're gonna put on our card base and somehow it's a little short, but we'll just trim that off. I'm just going to grab scissors and trim off the excess. Going to add our scrap ribbon piece. And then our little bird's gonna go on like that. So that guy's done. And for this card, we're going to add our scrap ribbon piece. So there you have two cards made using a scrap ribbon sh decorative strip. I have no idea what to call these things, but the idea is you can use up various ribbons to create an interesting element to add to your cards. You could also make this a little bigger and turn it into a pocket for a junk journal. So that's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, please do all the things that lets YouTube know you enjoyed the video. Like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, leave me a comment down below. Thanks for joining me and happy crafting.